Hey guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel and <laughs> Merk Girl Smile. I personally have been listening to Christmas music since approximately October 30th. Um, Christmas is kind of our jam in our household. Now, Thanksgiving has its own special place in my heart. I love Thanksgiving. We've hosted this year. I officially have cooked my first turkey and I took care of the menu and everything this year. So I love Thanksgiving. Don't get me wrong. It gets me ready for all the holidays. I love my family. But Christmas holds the true, true place in my heart. I love Christmas. I love the atmosphere. I love the real reason why we celebrate. I love the decorations. I love all the Christmas things. But what I really, really, really love is Christmas-centered romances. Oh, nothing gets my heart to a little more pitter-patter than a good Hallmark movie with cheesy acting and cheesy storytelling centered around the most awful fake snow you could see. I love those movies. So, I thought, what could it be better than pairing those moments in book form? So, I love good cheesy romance. I love any romance. I love any, any kind of book that has romance in it. It is my thing. So this year, I decided for the first time ever, I was going to put together a holiday TBR. I'm super, super excited. I will be officially starting this, not on the 1st of December, but the day after Thanksgiving. So November 26th is when my official TBR date will start, and I will probably go until the end of December just to kind of wrap it all up. Fall is going away. Christmas is coming to stay. And I thought nothing better than to bring in the Christmas spirit than with some, with some Christmas reads. So today I'm going to be showing you my holiday TBR. And I hope you guys are excited as I know. But I'm very excited. So first up, I have A Cross Country Christmas by Courtney Walsh. This is her newest release. She released it beginning of November I believe um if you follow Courtney on Instagram you know that she is the queen of critiquing Hallmark Christmas movies or any Christmas movie that really comes out um she's hilarious I love her and she sent this to me this year and I am so sick and excited to read it it totally seems up my alley um I will read the back for you so that you know so that if you need some Christmas reads you will know what these books are about. So, without further ado, <laughs> Lauren Richmond isn't a fan of Christmas, which is why she rarely makes a trip home to the Midwest for the holidays. After all, she has plenty to keep her busy, namely her duties as a set director on a TV sitcom. But this December, Lauren's brother and his wife are expecting a baby, so her brother arranges a ride home for her with his good friend, Will. And fortunately for Lauren, She's been trying to forget college baseball coach and childhood crush Will Sinclair for more than 10 years. Now, thanks to her fear of flying, she's stuck in a car with him from California to Illinois. She's circumspect and organized. He's flirty and spontaneous. She's convinced that people don't change. He's trying to prove to her and himself that he has. On this cross-country road trip, they'll both discover that history doesn't exactly repeat itself. But like any good Christmas carol, it does have a second verse. I'm so excited. Close proximity, forced into a road trip, and I there's probably going to be some good banter and wit, and I'm so excited about this. The cover design is so cute. Courtney did this herself, um, and it's just adorable, and I cannot wait to read it. Next up, I have another book by Courtney Walsh. This is A Match Made at Christmas. It's a Nantucket love story. So this is, um, I think it goes alongside her Nantucket romance series. When I read it, it said that it could be read as a standalone, so I thought, why not? This one, Hayes McGuire never believed the story is about a famous Nantucket matchmaker until she ropes him into taking over her duties while she's off the island for Christmas. So he enlists the help of one person he can trust with this crazy scheme, his best friend, Prudence. 
Armed with a, seri a series of rules, a book of success stories, and the promise of Christmas magic, magic, the pair of old friends sets out to make a Christmas match. Little do they know, the magic doesn't discriminate, and the pair soon finds their years of friendship deepening into something more. Will Prue and Hayes ignore the electricity in the air between them, or will there be more than one match made at Christmas? <laughs> I love matchmaker schemes, first of all. Add to the fact that they're best friends already. I love best friends to the best friends to more trope. <sighs> and I love little books like this. And this one's on the smaller side too. Because they're the perfect little little grab for you. You're we're all gonna be super busy around the holidays. And I mean you get this cute story. Christmas and romance and a little package and I'm so excited. So on to the next one. Rescued by the Hero by Nandy Blake. This came out last year. This was actually my December book package um, for my book box, Faith and Fiction book box. Um, there are no more, unfortunately, but it was super fun to put this together and talk to Mandy. This is a part of the Freedom of Heroes of Freedom Ridge series that her and a couple authors put out last year. I don't have any of the other books, but they can all be read as standalones. Um, and so since I focused on this book last year, I thought it would be perfect to add it to my TBR this year. This is the synopsis. The hardest part about this fake relationship is hiding it from her brother, especially when it doesn't feel fake. <laughs> Joanna Drake can't wait to escape to Freedom Ridge for the holidays. She needs to put hundreds of miles between her and her creepy coworker who won't seem to take no for an answer. When she runs into her brother's best friend at the ski resort, every relationship gets complicated. Aiden Clark is shocked to find out that his best friend brought his little sister along on vacation, especially when he finds himself interested in getting to know her. When she asks him to play along as her boyfriend to ward off an unwanted pursuer, he wholeheartedly agrees despite his friend's warnings to stay away from her. Between hiding their fake relationship from her brother and flaunting it in front of her pursuer, Aiden and Joanna find themselves wishing the relationship was as real as it seems under the mistletoe. When their ruse is exposed and Joanna is in danger, Aiden will have to put it all on the line to bring her home. <laughs> Guys, as much as I love the best friends to more trope and the stuck in a car and don't really like each other but like kind of like each other trope, um, fake relationships have got to be next on my list. I like a lot of tropes, let's be raw, just like a lot of stories. But come on, then the extra mile of they can't, like, they have to hide it from the brother but the... This is going to be so good. I'm so excited. A book that has been talked about. Or a book, yeah. It was talked about a little. But a book by an author who took the world by storm, I believe, last year. Everyone and their sister read her books last year, except me. I was the one sister who was a little behind. But I'm catching up. So this year on my TBR, I got it as a Christmas present last year for my brother. I have A Holiday by Gaslight by Mimi Matthews. Now, this isn't Christian fiction, but I believe it is a clean romance. Here we go. A Courtship of Convenience. Sophie Aberset is quite willing to marry outside of her class to ensure the survival of her family. But the darkly handsome Mr. Edward Sharp is no run-of-the-mill London merchant. He's grim and silent, a man of little emotion, or perhaps no emotion at all. After two months of courtship, she's ready to put an end to things. A last chance for love. But severing ties with their taciturn beau isn't as straightforward, isn't as straightforward as Sophie envisioned. Her parents are outraged. And then there's Charles Darwin, Prince Albert, and that dreaded gaslight. What's a girl to expect what's a girl to do except invite Mr. Sharp to as Apperset's house for Christmas and give him at one last chance to win her? Only this time there will be no false formality. This time, they'll get to know each other for who they really are. Again, it's shorter, so there's going to be a lot packed into this story, I'm sure. Um, but I've heard wonderful things about me, about Mimi Matthews. I've heard her storytelling is amazing, so I'm really, really, really excited to give this one a try. There's no better time than to try a book than at Christmas. Good cheer and all. So I'm really excited to try this one out, and it's historical. You know me next book on my holiday TBR is none other than The L Project by Miss Summer Dow. This author, <laughs> uh, she introduced herself to me on the Instagram a while back. I don't even remember when. One of her, when, 
the last book in her fake romance trilogy was coming out uh mind you again one of my favorite tropes i read it loved it um since then i have purchased all of her books i've read everyone that's come out since that one so she's had a couple books in the series come out she let us know that she was releasing a christmas book and i got so excited is the first book in her new holiday series so the second book is going to be based around the 4th of July which is another one of my favorite holidays mainly because it's two days before my birthday but that is neither here nor there we're not talking about 4th of July right now we're talking about Christmas so I'm going to redo the back of the L project I'm so excited about this book <laughs> love really shouldn't be put into a family boat L all I wanted was a nice, relaxing Christmas vacation at home with my family. But no, the lot of them had to ruin it by inviting my childhood crush. Oliver Moore, and throwing us together at every possible moment. Heaven help me. Now, instead of sipping hot cocoa by the fire, I'm dodging matchmaking attempts and trying to pretend I'm not attracted to Oliver's adorably perfect smile. I will not become another one of my family's projects. Oliver. I mean, am I upset Elle's family spindled us into Christmas vacation together? No. Will I ever admit that out loud? Also no. I've long ago come to terms with the friend zone Elle placed me in back around ninth grade. But there's something different about her this week. Something that's bringing up feelings I really should ignore. Too bad ignoring has never been my strong suit. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm so excited. Best friends to more. Hello. Um, also, short, sweet, to the point. We love a good short Christmas novella. Um, also, the family matchmaking. I bet it's going to be hilarious. Summer has some of the greatest family dynamics. So there's always a lot of fun going on in the stories between the families and the siblings and stuff. So I'm super, super, super excited to read this and jump into this story and this family. And I can't wait to meet Elle and Oliver. Also, the cover is adorable. Summer also designed this one, and it's such a cute little cover. The next book I actually picked up in Nashville last November when I was hanging out with my friend Grace. Uh, we went to Parnassus, and I found these, and I got really excited. I'm not sure, um, so I'm not going to, like, wholly recommend it. The other books, I know the authors, and I trust people who have re recommended the books, so I'm happy to recommend them, even though haven't read them yet I'm happy to talk about them and squeal about the authors because I trust the authors um this one however never heard of no one's ever talked about it don't necessarily know how uh clean it is because it's not Christian fiction it was at Parnassus which it isn't a Christian fiction bookstore um but it looks like a like YA type Christmas story so I'm hoping that it's a clean read, um, but I will let you guys know as the month progresses because I'm hoping to do some vlogs in between. Um, so as I'm reading, I will let you know, or if uh, I don't do a vlog about this one, I will let you know in my wrap up. So it is All I Want for Christmas by Wendy Lagaya. Um, this is what it's about. Under the Mistletoe with Who? Bailey Briggs is counting down the days to Christmas. She lives for holiday music, baking cookies, and going on snowy sleigh rides, and wearing her light-up reindeer ears to work at Winslow's bookstore. Christine. But all she really wants this year is the one thing she doesn't have. Someone special to kiss under the mistletoe. And she's 100% certain that that someone isn't Jacob Marley. Athlete athlete player and of questionable taste in girlfriends and that charlie the mysterious stranger with the british accent is the romantic lead of her dreams is she right well this will be a december to remember filled with real life christmas magic and if she stays on santa's nice list a wish that just might come true i have a honker and that is because it is a novella collection this is royally yours it's royalty meets small town charm in four heartwarming christmas romances with stories by melissa tag betsy st amont liz johnson and ashley carlock i've heard wonderful things about this novella collection i've seen it on instagram multiple times so i will read the little blurb on the back it doesn't break down every story uh, but i think it kind of gives like a generic description of the four Tinsel, Vermont is known for its no paparazzi policy and Christmas decorations that are fit for a queen. 
This holiday season, join four royals on a stroll through the town square as they each find their Christmas wishes for a happily ever after. Tiara's optional. The Royally Yours Collections includes four royal and romantic Christmas novellas by best-selling, award-winning award authors. One Royal Christmas by Melissa Tagg, The Reluctant Princess by Betsy St. Amant, A Royal Wonderland by Liz Johnson, and A Tinsel Holiday by Ashley Clark. It is a very chunky, chunky book, but um, I'm really, really excited. I love novella collections because you feel very accomplished for reading the whole thing. You've read four stories. But not only that, um, you can break it up and you can read a story here, a story there. So regardless, I love novella collections and I'm super excited to jump into this one. Next on the list is another novella collection and this is Enchanted by Melissa Tag. This is her Christmas collection and it has three charming small town novellas. So, it is three heartwarming holiday romances, one charming small town. We love small town romances. Rinwicky, I, I'm gonna assume that's Rinwicky. I'm really sorry if that's pronounced wrong, I don't know. Through Wiki siblings Drew, Colin, and Lee have faced their fair share of struggles and separation through the years. But over three enchanting Christmas seasons in their postcard perfect hometown, they'll each discover the joy of a fresh start and the magic of unexpected romance. Be still my Christmas loving heart. Next up we have yet another little holiday novella collection. It is under the Texas mistletoe by Miss Karen Wittemeyer. <laughs> she put a couple of her Christmas stories into print. It's a trio of Christmas novellas by Karen. What is more perfect than Karen writing Christmas? Nothing. Uh, in a three-in-one novella collection, best-selling author Karen Wittemeyer presents the new story, A Texas Christmas Carol, in which a town's wealthy Scrooge-like bachelor finds his world invaded by a woman set on earning his donation for helping the local poor and by the penetrating questions of three mysterious visitors. Includes first time in print. I'm so excited. I didn't read it in um, ebook form because I have a really hard time reading ebooks. Uh, and then I found out it was going to be in paper, so I waited. And I might actually cry when I read the story. We shall see. Uh, for the first time in print, an Archer family Christmas. That's right, y'all. We are going back to the Archer family. If you haven't read Karen, perfect place to start is with the Archer Brother series. Oh. Such a good books. Such good books. Um, anyways, she wrote a novella about the Archer family, and we're going back. So, put it into print. When the Archer clan gathers for the Christmas holiday, an unexpected request for help leaves Cassandra Archer directly in the path of a dangerous outlaw. Desperate to protect the woman he loves, Jim Archer races to the rescue, only to find that Cassie's life is not the only one in peril. It will take a Christmas miracle in the entire Archer clan to keep a second Archer Christmas from ending in disaster. Oh, so excited. In a previously published Gift of the Heart, a widow and her young daughter moved to Hope Springs for a fresh start. But with no money to secure a home, Ruth must convince a wealthy resort owner to accept her heirloom brooch as collateral. Will the pin that brought love to three generations soften the heart of a wounded recluse and give Ruth a second chance at love as the holidays draw near? Now I know why I read it. It was in the heirloom, um, heirloom brooch series that a couple authors did a couple years ago. I've read that one. That's why I read this story. Wrinkled through the collection, you'll find hope-filled Christmas devotion, Wittemeyer holiday recipes, and fun facts about 19th century Christmas celebrations. So it's just a lot of fun wrapped up into a cute little book, and I was super excited to hear that they were putting all the books into print, and they were all Christmas themed, and I'm really excited to add it to my TBR this year. This is Joy to the World. It is a Regency Christmas collection. My brother got this for me last year for Christmas, and I'm super excited to include it in this year's TBR. There are stories by Carolyn Miller, Amanda Barrett, and Erica Vetch, all three wonderful Regency authors. Without further ado, I'm going to read what the novella is about. The story by Carolyn Miller is called Heaven and Nature Sing. Two music lovers deeply devoted to each other were on the brink of engagement when the family circumstances drove them apart. How can they ever overcome their obligations and fears to find their way back to each other's arms? Far as the curse is found by Amanda Barrett. One winter night, a woman struggling to provide for her illegitimate child encounters a scarred veteran from Napoleonic Wars on the streets of London. Can love conquer the darkness of two broken pasts? Wonders of His Love by Erica Vetch. A Scots portrait painter finds work at a noble manor house over the holidays. 
He never imagined he'd fall in love with the emotionally frozen widow there. Now he wants nothing more than to thaw her heart. Aww. I'm super excited to give these three stories a try and just, I mean, the cover is absolutely beautiful. Puts you in the total Christmas mood. I say that as the sun is shining and fall is still slightly in the air. But we're all for the Christmas things. This will put me in the Christmas mood. The next story that I have is The Twelve Holidays by Emma St. Clair. And this is a sweet romantic comedy. It is incredibly tiny. I might do a reading vlog, like a weekend 24 hour Christmas reading challenge. We shall see. Not gonna put the pressure on myself, but we shall see. Anywho, Twelve Holidays of Christmas. Um, Love the cover, love the title, let's read the back. If someone tells you that waiting for your boyfriend in a giant stocking is a good idea, they're wrong. I learned this the hard way when I discover my boyfriend is cheating on me. Once again, I find myself crying on the very broad and sturdy shoulders of my best friend Weston. And even though he rejected me when we were kids, my feelings for Weston start bubbling back to the surface especially when he insists that we work our way through the list of 12 holidays I planned for my ex. 12 dates with my super hot and totally perfect BFF? Um, okay, you don't have to ask me twice. Only, the dates continue to be disasters. The biggest disaster of all is the way I'm about to get my heart crushed again by my best friend. Because I can't hide my feelings anymore and I don't think being just friends is enough. Winning over Weston would take a Christmas miracle. This is not a Christian fiction book, but Abby loves Emma St. Clair, and I um, am a part of a sweet romance group, and she's one of the authors that, uh, like, moderates it and talks, and she's super fun, super sweet. I have a couple of her other books on my to-buy list, um, and I'm very excited about them. This is a bonus novella that falls between books three and four in her Love Clichés series. Which and last but not least, I'm super excited for this book. It is A Picture of Christmas by Belle Renshaw, or if you follow her on Instagram, you now know that it is the beautiful Emily Haney. But she's been writing under a pen name since she started as Belle Renshaw, uh, but she has officially revealed herself to the world. Yeah, I guess that's really the only way you can say that. Um, but it is Emily Haney or Create, Explore, Read on her other page. She is a gifted author. I've read every book in the series. This is number four and I have absolutely loved it. This has been the chunkiest book of the series, which makes me really excited because I'm hoping this means that we'll get to see, um, the brothers, the Bradley brothers some more, um, that some other characters will pop in. So I'm really, really excited about this. I will read you the back now so you can be excited with me. It's always worth it to follow your dreams. Rhett Bradley's home for the holidays, but it's not by choice. Faced with the potential backward step in his company in Seattle, he's forced to take time off. But somehow, being back in winter Montana isn't the dead end he was expecting. Olive Fitzsimmons has a secret email friend who's made her new job at the mayor's office bearable. Still, putting her true passions aside for the political hubbub in winter hasn't been a step in the right direction for her. Sure, she can make her rent payments, but is she happy? As Rhett and Olive continue to run into each other in the small town amid holiday, festi holiday festivals and sparkling Christmas lights, their once fiery opposition starts to settle into something more. But Olive's interest in her email friend have grown into a crush, and Rhett will be leaving winter in the new year, won't he? Join the familiar cast of characters in Winter, Montana as the community joins together in the spirit of Christmas where hearts soften and a kiss between opposites is the perfect holiday miracle. <laughs> we met Rhett at the end of book three. We met Olive, um, I think at the end of book three as well. She's a photographer. Um, and she was really, they were both really cute when we met them. Uh, I was excited about their story. So I'm super excited it came out in paperback because you know a girl loves paperback and I'm really excited to add it to my winter Montana collection and I'm super excited to add it to my holiday TBR this year as of now that is my list I was trying to rack my brain to um, like see if I had any other cri oh I do <gasps> should I add them totally forgot she did this um I'll put them in the video. If I find any other ones, 
I'll probably, I might add them. Um, you might see them in videos throughout the month of December. Or you can check my stuff out on Instagram. I'll probably talk about them there. But I'll add these to this video. I don't think they'll be on my set TBR. These are the ones that I really want to focus on. The ones, the ones I'm really excited about. But I forgot that she wrote these. So I'll add them to kind of give you guys some ideas. So, Michelle Greep. You have the 12 Days of Weekly Manor and Tales of, A Tale of Two Hearts. This is book one and book two in her Once Upon a Dickens Christmas. I'll read the back of these as well. 12 Days of Christmas Tide, Wrapped in a Mystery. When Clara Chapman receives an intriguing invitation to spend Christmas 1850 at an English manor home, she is hesitant yet compelled to attend. For if she remains the duration of the 12-day celebration, she is promised a sum of 500 pounds. That's enough money to bring her brother back from America and re reinstate their stolen family fortune. But is she walking into danger? It appears, it appears so, especially when she comes face to face with one of the other guests, her former fiance, Benjamin Lane. In prison unjustly, Ben wants revenge on the unspoken person who stole his honor. When he's given the chance to gain his freedom, he jumps at it and is blindsided by the anger of the woman he left at the altar. Brought together under mysterious circumstances for the 12 days of Christmas, Clara and Ben discover that what they've been striving for isn't what ultimately matters. What matters most is what Christmas is all about. Love. Sounds fun. Book two. Can two hearts survive such deception? London, 1853. Innkeeper's daughter, Mina Scott, will do anything to escape the drudgery of her life, for there's nothing more mundane than serving customers day after day. Every minute she can, she reads lovely stories and dreams of Sunday becoming a real lady and catching the eye of William Barlow, a frequent guest at the inn. William is a gentleman's son, a charming but penniless rogue. However, the bachelor, his bachelor uncle will soon name an heir, either William or his scheming cousin Percy. In an effort to secure the inheritance, William gives his uncle the impression he's married, a perfect plan until uncle invites William to bring his wife for a visit. William asks Mina to be his pretend bride only to find his uncle names an heir and only until his uncle names an heir on Christmas Day. Mina is flattered and frustrated by the offer for she wants a true relationship with William. Yet she agrees, then wishes she hadn't. So does William. Deceiving the old man may mean the, that more than just money is lost. Honestly, after reading the descriptions, I'll probably add them to my list too. Those totally seem like some books up my alley. Um, which is probably why I bought them. Who knows? I have a book buying problem. But those are the books that are on my TBR. I'm super, 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 super excited about the holidays as I'm jingling. But yeah, these are the books that are on my TBR this holiday season. If I have any other more, like any more that I come across in my own collection, I'll probably add them. We shall see. Uh, but I probably won't be buying any other ones. Don't quote me on that. Again circle back Alicia has a book buying problem my stack of books 14 if I include the two by Michelle um totally doable right a couple of the books well most of the books are novellas they're short so I'll get through them it'll be fine I got this don't forget to check out my blog for the love of Christian fiction blogspot.com and my Instagram at for the love of Christian fiction I'll be talking about all these books there. Um, I'll probably be reviewing the books on my blog or just talking about them on my Instagram account, posting pictures, some behind the scenes. Um, if I find any other books, that's probably where I'll post about them. So if you want to keep up with me, that's where I am normally. Uh, so check me out there. My other links are in the description. As well as, I talked about it earlier, my book box, Faith and Fiction book box. I am doing a sale the month of November and the month of December. The boxes are $10 off, so if you are looking for something for your bookish friend or just yourself, uh, they're already pretty much packaged and ready to go for you, so all you have to do is hit the buy now button, and I will get them out to you so that you can get them in time for Christmas, hopefully, um, or if you just want to buy them for yourself, they're there too, so perfect time to get them is during a sale. I will link that in my description box as well. and. That's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.